Located in the middle of Barcelona and visited by millions, the Sagrada Familia is a masterpiece from the brilliant mind of renowned architect Anthony Gaudi. Construction of this World Heritage Site still continues to this day, more than 135 years after the laying of its first cornerstone, and it's not expected to be complete until 2026. Anthony Gaudi gave each architectural element meaning. The nativity facade is intricately designed with marble animals like turtles, salamanders, pelicans, and a huge tree of life surrounded by white marble doves. It represents the birth of Christ and depicts the scenes of stories from the Immaculate Conception of Virgin Mary to the growth of Jesus. The interior of the Sagrada Familia embodies the essence of Gaudi's architectural style. Every door, every column, and almost every area has its own concrete symbolic significance. The stained glass windows were an important feature designed to draw the eye upwards and inspire meditation on the divine. Gaudi wasn't a fan of convention, and he steered clear of any traditional Gothic elements that would take away from his artistry. As a rule, he avoided straight lines and angles in the Sagrada Familia to give it a more natural feel. He created the columns in the shape of tree trunks to make visitors feel like they were deep inside a forest. An elevator takes you up one of the main towers before having to climb narrow steps to reach the viewpoint from the top of the church. Apart from the 18 towers, there are also many smaller pinnacles on the church, topped with some religious symbols such as sheaves of wheat and bunches of grapes. Anthony Gaudi passed away in a tragic accident in 1926 and is buried in a crypt beneath the Sagrada Familia. The Passion Facade was designed in 1986 and represents the passion and death of Jesus but the geometric and angular style is a total break from Gaudi's nativity facade on the opposite side. The Sagrada Familia is Anthony Gaudi's best known work and has become an undisputed symbol of Barcelona. We're now here in Park Güell, designed by Gaudi in the early 1900s. You can see his naturalist style playfully come alive. From the funky curved buildings, sculptures, and tile work, all of it is inspired by the organic forms of nature that the architect is well known for. One of the most photographed features of the park is the colorful salamander which guards the staircase in the monumental area. The sculpture is a fine example of the style of mosaic work which Gaudi would become famous for, trencadis, meaning chopped in Catalan. The technique involves using small pieces of chopped ceramics and cementing them together. From up here, you get some remarkable views of Barcelona. 
The Serpentine Bench is a giant collage of colorful and vibrant tile mosaics that surrounds this main plaza, and is actually one of the world's largest continuous park bench. Gaudi was an admirer of classical Greece, and here in the Hall of a Hundred Columns, that influence is apparent. Based on the ancient Greek town of Adelphi, the columns support the main plaza above, and the ceiling is formed of small domes constructed using the traditional technique of clay bricks decorated with original tile shard mosaics. One of the most characteristic features of Anthony Gaudi's work is how he translates his fascination with the natural world. Everything from the patterns he uses to the way he constructs his designs is inspired by nature. One particular piece that really deserves emphasis is the portico of the washerwoman and made by different artists so that none of them would be the same. The park is defined by a series of viaducts that Gaudi made in such a way so carriages could fit and people could travel through. They're perfectly integrated with the terrain and he adapted them completely and made them so that he didn't have to break the aesthetics that nature offers. Gaudi's eccentric influence can be seen all across Barcelona. One of his most famous is Casa Batio, also called the House of Bones. It's an icon in Barcelona and a masterpiece of modernism attracting over a million visitors a year. Casa Milá, also known as La Pedrera, is one of the last buildings of the ingenious architect before he devoted himself to the construction of the Sagrada Familia. The curved facade of the Casa Milá is a unique example of organic architecture with its twisted wrought iron railings to represent seaweed. The curved lines symbolize the natural movements of water and the intention was for the building to look like a sea of stone. But the roof is one of the most impressive parts of La Pedrera, where you can also enjoy views of the city. The floor of the roof is uneven with steps winding up walls like forces of nature. You really become immersed in this atmosphere. The roof deck terrace rises and falls, and it's adorned with these skylights, staircase exit, ventilation fans, and chimneys, but all are designed as pieces of sculpture. They're constructed using brick covered with lime, broken marble, and other ceramics, and was supposedly the source of inspiration for the helmets of Darth Vader and his stormtroopers in Star Wars. Gaudi's influence isn't limited to just architect, but also the development of a whole culture and artistic movement. Gaudi changed Barcelona, and even to this day, his work is thoroughly studied and globally admired.